Liner versus ChatGPT. Which one do I think is better as someone with four university degrees and as someone who has played around with hundreds of AI tools and spent hundreds of hours on both Liner and ChatGPT? Well, in today's video, I've got a really exciting four-step journey that shows you how you can go from just a research question, just having a topic in mind, to having a fully fledged research question. You know your gap in literature, you know what direction you're going to take, and you found research papers on the way. And this will be incorporating an AI tool called Liner and lots of really exciting, quite unique agents that they have within their platform. So if you haven't heard of Liner before, I have mentioned it on my channel, but it is a powerful productivity tool for students, researchers, and academics. It helps with the really time-consuming parts of research, such as forming ideas or doing a literature search. And Liner actually helps you to focus on the things that matters. So you're able to accelerate your research with really precise answers that you may be looking for. And you can do this using their research agents such as the literature review agent, the research tracer, or even the hypothesis generator. Now let's start with step number one, which is where you do a reliability check. Here I'm beginning my journey with quite a broad query in the general search tool and I want to gather initial context. So I want to make sure that my research question or the topic that I'm interested in is a good one to pursue. Here I want to try to retrieve credible academic grade results to have a list of research papers and a bit of a topic kind of scope to ensure that the thing that I'm interested in writing and reading about is actually something that's useful. So when you open up Liner, you can see on the left hand side column, you have all the agents available to you that we're going to be using a little bit later on. And then you have your AI search engine in the middle. I can decide if I want to do a general search across the web or I can do a scholarly search which looks at research papers. In this case, I want to kind of focus on research papers only. I can also toggle and change from simple, advanced, or deep research. In this case, again, I'm also going to do the deep research, and you can also filter by paper, year, journal ranking, uh, and the field. In this case, I'm going to filter just the publication date as I want papers from just the last sort of 15 years and nothing earlier than that. So I'm going to apply that and go ahead and ask my question. Now, my question here is what are the long-term effects of chronic stress on the brain? Now, that's a question that I have. I want to try to find as much research as I can, find gaps in literature and make sure that this is a question that's worth while trying to answer. You can really see how Lina has broken down each of the different parts to be able to get the overall answer. And then you have a bit of a literature review, like a bit of a kind of in-depth summary and every single sentence, almost every sentence actually, is supported by a citation, which is a giveaway that this is a trusted source this is a source that you can use and you know that it's not hallucinating as you can click on any of those papers and it'll take you directly to the original website and the journal from where these papers came from. To compare results, I asked ChatGPT the exact same question. And as you can see, the first result that I got had no citations or referencing in it at all and would not be academically viable. The second one I asked was, can you give me some with references? And yes, I have got some references here, but they're not written in academic standard and they're not even clickable. So I had to ask for clickable links. And even then I had to really go ahead and try and find where this information has even come from. But there's just so many barriers to finding academically rigorous information on ChatGPT. And as you can see, the papers that they did give me were not necessarily the most recent peer-reviewed studies. So that's also a red flag. You can also start to add to your collection. So this is um, of course really important when you're searching for literature, you need to be able to save them somewhere and collect them into a library. And then if you click on any one sentence, it tells you why the sources were selected. So in this case, there are three sources with, for this sentence. And it tells you what is specific about each of these sources and why Lina thought it was relevant enough to include it within this summary. And I, I think this is fantastic and so unique. Um, and then of course at the at the bottom you can actually click on the reference and go ahead and open it up and read it for yourself or add it to your folder. I think this is so valuable and something that I haven't really seen before. And then if you scroll down to the bottom, you can create either a mind map or a flow chart. What it has done is it has broken down to me the different aspects of chronic stress on the brain. So there's structural consequences, there's emotional consequences, there's alterations in connectivity and things like that. And it's straight away given me very quickly an understanding of how I could try to read more or how I could even structure 
a literature review in the future. And similarly, you also have the flowchart as well. The second step is to orient the field using the literature review agent. Now, this helps you to move from just having a general understanding to a more structured academic overview. And of course, this amazing agent will do most of the work. I've clicked on literature review and I've asked what are the long-term effects of chronic stress on the brain? It started with finding keywords and what I really want here is for the agent to produce kind of a structured outline that organizes the research in some sort of way, maybe chronologically, maybe thematically, and I want kind of key trends and key papers to be pulled out here. So what it's doing is collecting these papers and you can really see the life cycle of how these sources are found and how they're being selected. And then the literature review is completed and this probably took a minute or even not probably less than two minutes. I was really hoping to have the themes as I just mentioned and the analysis revealed three major themes and it's given detail about those themes within uh, the actual review itself. But I also have research gaps and future directions. So that's quite useful and something that I didn't necessarily ask for, but it is useful within the literature review and you'll see how we'll use it now. And at any one point, I can click on any of those references. I can cite it in any format I like. I can click on it and go straight to the website or I can save it within my library as well. So that's really easy to do and something you can consistently do at any point when you're using Liner. I wanted to test ChatGPT's output to create a literature review for me. And here you can see that, yes, there is information, of course, but it's quite general and it isn't really in-depth or critical at all. It's not very academically rigorous. And I can tell this by kind of the dates and the old kind of nature of the research papers that have been used. There's also no way of like filtering the papers or saving the papers. And yes, I can click on the links and open up the research paper. But then what do I do with it then? Like I'm not able to save these to a library or anything immediately. I have to kind of jump from tabs to different tabs to different programs to be able to just get myself a good record of literature from what I'm looking for. Now that I have a really useful list of literature that has been pulled out by Liner, I can then go ahead and look at the research. So step number three is to map the trajectories with the research tracer. Now this is where you take a paper identified in any of the steps you used and you can use the research tracer to visualize its lineage. So where has it come from? What came before it? And what is it linked to in terms of research? So from my literature review, I can click on research tracer. It looks at all the papers that has cited that paper and all the papers that this paper cites as well. So it's got a full 360 of your research paper that you're interested in and the process. The reason why this is really useful is it's showing you how papers relate to each other, which you use a lot when you're thinking about kind of writing a discussion or even writing kind of like a critical piece. It really emphasizes how one paper builds on another, not just sort of who has cited this. There's not many tools these days that have something that's unique to other tools. So here you can see that if I click on any of these papers, it gives me a different kind of lineage path and the colors are reflected. Again, at any point, you're able to click on that research paper and it takes you to the original website and journal from where it has come from. So guaranteeing safety, no hallucinations and confidence that anything that Liner presents to you is from its huge database uh, of research papers rather than just made up or random. Last but definitely not least, we're going to conclude this discovery phase by picking out any future directions or gaps in the literature. One of the most useful things that Liner does is it helps you to pinpoint where you can contribute using the insights and using the actual hypothesis generators. And what it has said is that it's going to conduct a literature review to understand the current state of knowledge. It's going to identify some more research gaps and it's going to generate three novel and robust hypotheses based on what the research goal is. So it's kind of following on from what I started from. And then of course you have a really well written and easy to understand summary of the gaps and unanswered questions. So giving you information about where there are some knowledge gaps uh, within this research area. I also have been presented with three different hypotheses that I can refine if I want, I can take if I want, I can think about in a bit more detail um, and I can look at each of those individually, look at literature to do with them and think about whether this is a research area 
uh, or gap that I really want to focus on. For this comparison, I wanted to ask ChatGPT to find some gaps in literature for this research topic. So I gave it the same information that I gave to Lina, and here there are three gaps that have been given to me. But none of the gaps have any relevance or citations that can back up what they are saying. So they're more general gaps. The lack of immediate referencing means that I can't really look into each reference in more depth without kind of prying for the specific link and the dates being a lot older and there not being really in-depth reasons for why these specific gaps have been chosen, it just makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable with going ahead and using this tool uh, for my literature. There's also a citation recommender agent for when you've maybe written a paragraph or you've written a, a little section already and you just want to find some references. Such a unique tool that I just haven't seen before and that no other academic AI tool has, let alone ChatGPT. It analyzes your text, it analyzes research and then it brings everything together by adding citations where it thinks it's necessary. Remember that everything here is a suggestion. You don't have to take these references. You don't have to copy and paste this. This is your text anyway. It's what you've written but it is showing you what sources that they would recommend and it's always picking the most relevant paper like this one for example is Nature which is highly rated and a very strong journal as well. And this just shows me that Lina is acting more like a research partner. And it's a tool that helps me retrieve and organize my work rather than just giving me information that I don't quite understand. So as a researcher, it's allowing me to have time to be critical, think about discussions and really build upon what I'm working on and giving me a bit more time to be efficient. I'm so certain that if you've got this far in this video, then you are mind blown just like I was when I first tried this out and you want to try it out for yourself. So I'll leave the link to try out liner down below along with a discount code for you as well for the pro subscription. But either way, you can try it out for free if you just want to see how it feels. But I've shown you only a couple of ways of using liner. There are so many other agents and I'll link down below also a video I did recently um, showing some other agents that they have but there's just so much that Lina offers that you really can't get with any other AI platform and I'm saying that as someone who has honestly tried <laughs> and played with many 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 over the past couple of years so let me know down below if you've heard of Lina before or if you've tried it before since watching my last video I'd love to hear from you and don't forget to click on the link down below to try it out for yourself and I hope to see you in my next video okay bye